Okay, today I want to talk about Fetch. Fetch is the latest version of Ajax supported by browsers. Um, if you watch my other video on what is Ajax, I'll explain a little bit more detail about the history and the XML HTTP request object. But for this video, I want to talk about specifically the basics of Fetch. So you can see in my uh, code sample here, I've got the word Fetch. And it's a method, you can tell, because it's got a couple of parentheses coming after it. Fetch, at its most basic, is just making an HTTP request. So you're telling the browser, hey, I want you to go and fetch another file. If you're in a browser, and let's see, I open up Chrome here, type in an address, you hit enter, the browser is requesting a file. We're using JavaScript to go and fetch that file, and we're going to be using the fetch method to do that. Now, this uses promises, which is another video series that I've got. I'll put that in the comments afterwards uh, so you can understand a little bit more about promises, but I'm going to try to explain this without talking about promises. So, I want to fetch a resource. Now, I have a URL here. This is a, a great little site. It'll generate fake JSON data for you. So I'm going to be making a request to this website and saying, hey, give me some user data. It's going to generate the user data. I am generating here a random number between 1 and 20, inclusively. If it generates a number that is higher than 10, and then I request this URL with users and then the number greater than 10 after it, I'm going to get an error. It's going to give me a 404 error. Anything less than 10, I'm good to go. So, I am writing out to the comments, uh, to the console rather, fetch URI, which is my variable, so I'm going to see the full path of what's being requested. And then I'm going to make the call to fetch. So, URI, it's just the URL. This is what I'm requesting. There's a method called then, which I can just stick on to the end like this, and I can actually chain together a whole bunch of them. I can tell, tell the browser, I want you to do this fetch. When you get the results, then run a function that I'm going to put inside here. When this one's done and has a return value, it's going to pass it on to the next one, and so on and so on. I can have a big long chain of these thens. And if there is an error that happens in any one of these, inside the fetch or inside any of the thens, if there's an error, it'll get passed down to the catch. And this function is going to handle the fact that there was an error. So I can write a message out to the user or I can try to request a different URI or something like that. So as I said, there's going to be a function inside of here. And this function is going to be passed something. The fetch does the actual call. It sends a request off, brings the response back. But instead of the response being displayed in the browser, like a normal URL that you would type into the location bar here, typing it in here means it's going to appear on the page. Doing it by fetch means the request comes back and it's just, it's passed back to my function so I can use it. So right in here, I'm going to use the word response. Now, it's just a variable name. It can be called anything you want. But this is the actual file that's coming back. So inside of here is my JSON data that I want to get at. And I'm just going to say return response JSON. Along with fetch, there's a bunch of these methods, text, JSON, to blob, a couple of others. This is going to take the file and it's going to attempt to re read the contents of the file and extract that text and convert it into JSON. As long as this works, I'm good. And then this piece of JSON that came from this file will be sent down to my next function. Now we can write the functions this way, or we can use the arrow syntax, which is what I'm going to do right here, just to save myself a little bit of typing and also to demonstrate the difference between them. There we go. So, my parameter, data. So, this is coming from this state right here. 
this is the file. The file gets the JSON data extracted and returned. That will pass it on to the next then. This will be the actual data, the actual JSON. So we could console.log data. That's the string. Or we can say I want the string version of that. So built-in JSON stringify data. Now, this is going to be a string which contains all of it. That's going to make it easier for me to write this out. I don't want to write a JavaScript object out here. I want the string version of the JavaScript object. And I'm going to put it inside of this div on my web page. So let's say let output equal get an equal ID output and then output text content equals JSON data. There we are. And just so I've got something in my console as well, I'm going to put the actual data object so that I can parse through it. Down in my catch, this would be passed an error object. So this is the error object. If an error did occur, so for example, I got that 404 error. I'm going to write out in my console there was an error, and there's a property called message. That would be the text of this message. So let's take a look at this. I'm going to jump back into here. Refresh. There we go. This is the data that actually came back from that page. So here we are, console login fetch, coming from line 15 here. This is the URL that I requested. That's the domain name, users slash nine. So it's valid. And I got back, oh, console log data twice here. That's why it's coming up twice. And then putting it inside of the HTML, there's the string. So I'll just, okay, there we go. Here's an example of the error. So it's requesting a number higher than 10, which means that my JSON placeholder.type code is going to fail and it's going to return a 404 error message for me. There we go. Okay, now I didn't call the error function here. Now we were saying that, hey, there's going to be an error that could occur. But I'm not actually checking to see if there's a, a network failure or anything. We can, in fact, in here, check to see, hey, that response that I got back, was it a 200? So my HTTP response code. And if you want to look into HTTP response codes, I've got a link up here. And that'll be in the code just for you. So I want to take a look and say, if response dot status equals 200, then I'm going to return this else. If I got a 404 error, or a 500 error, or some other status, I'm going to actually throw an error. There we go. So I'm actually creating an error here. This error will be thrown back up to the fetch, and it's going to say, oh, I got an error. I better call the catch function. This error object gets passed into here, and this string, invalid user ID, becomes the message property. So if we go back now to our browser, refresh that, there we go, error, invalid user ID. So that's our error being passed down to here. And that's it. That's the basics of how fetch works. Now, there's a lot of other properties. There's request objects, response objects, the body object, and a lot of other things that we can do, but I will get into those in future videos.